Hi, I'm Joanne Roberts, and this is the Coping with Cross-Dressing video. What we're going to do here is talk with real couples who've learned to cope with and integrate cross-dressing into their relationships. Now, some of you watching this video probably believe that's not possible in your case. We hope to show you that it is possible. Before we talk to our couples, let me give you a very brief overview on the history of cross-dressing. Cross-dressing has existed in every culture and in every historical period. Some of the time it's been acceptable and some of the time it has not. Before World War I, cross-dressing was acceptable in this country. There are historical accounts of womanless weddings as fundraisers and similar kinds of events. Female impersonation on stage was considered an art form. And one impersonator, Julian Eltinge, was so popular that he had a theater named after him. It was after World War II that public cross-dressing became taboo. But that doesn't mean that no one was cross-dressing. Many continued in the privacy of their own homes. So what brings it back out into the open now? Well, recent shifts in permissible gender roles for women have encouraged many cross-dressers to venture back out into the public eye. And cross-dressing is a hot topic in 1993 due to movies like The Crying Game and Paris is Burning. Now, no one knows why people cross-dress. A friend of mine says jokingly, there are at least six good theories about cross-dressing, and there are at least six people who fit those theories but no one theory describes everyone. We can, however, say some very general things about cross-dressing. Most cross-dressing starts at an early age by five or six. It starts as play, and it may disappear for a while. And then later, during puberty, it comes back strong, and usually, but not always, with strong erotic overtones. But this eroticism diminishes with time, just as it does with every aspect of adolescent sexuality. Now, while science can't tell us why people cross-dress, it does tell us that once these behaviors and feelings become a part of our personality, they never go away, ever. So forget about a cure, because there is no such thing. Well, that's enough boring theory. Let's talk with some cross-dressers. How long have you been cross-dressing? Um, pretty much all my life. Um, after, probably seriously, after I was like 12 or 13 is where I got real involved in That's about, about it. You want to move to me now? Oh, ever since I was a child, I can remember my first instances uh, in just about pre-kindergarten when I played with my mother's lingerie and uh, it evolved for a few years until we actually bought a television when we had a television installed in the house, uh, the lingerie no longer became as important as watching television. So it almost, you know, was almost a babysitter for me, because my mother allowed me to wear the clothes and play with them in, to keep me quiet and, uh, so that she could do her housework and get her chores done. And it worked out very nicely for her. Uh, however, it obviously opened doors for me. Actually, uh, tell me about the last five, six years, uh, where I felt the need or desire to wear undergarments, and as far as actively cross-dressing, probably three and a half years. Okay. So, why and when did you decide to tell your partner that you were a cross-dresser? We'll start with Nancy. Um, I told her about three and a half years ago We've been married for almost 20 years, and uh, I had kept it from her all that time. Of course, what was going on in my mind was that I thought over time I could eliminate this desire and this need to do this. And I tried every experiment under the sun to do that, and I went through all of the normal experiences of throwing clothes away and trying to grow a beard and do everything that was manly and macho in order to, to bury it, but I was unsuccessful. And when I came to the point where I realized uh, I could no longer hide this or, or want to hide this anymore, um, I decided to tell her. And I also knew behind that that one of the reasons, the main reason, was because I, was, uh, I felt so alone. And the loneliness uh, really drove me to 
want to set some way up where I could tell her and explain it to her and hope that it wouldn't do anything to damage our marriage and our relationship. So it took a while to get up the courage to do that, but I eventually did. Probably soon after, where I felt the need perhaps for role reversal in, in some aspects of our relationship. And uh, very fortunately, we're, I can talk with my wife. Uh, and I feel we have a very honest relationship together. And uh, I let her know. We, we talked about it. And she's always been very supporting. Uh, my situation, I didn't really tell her. She found my clothes. I used to travel on the road, and she found my clothes in the trunk. And that was uh, probably 20 years ago. We've been married for 22 years. But it's taken us probably 18 years to really face it and to know there's other people out there. And um, we used to go and do in motels and stuff. It took a long time just to be able to go and do it. At first, it was like complete rejection. And then we did a little bit and a little bit and a little bit until it grew, and then after we finally found, I think um, when we got tapestry, and we learned there was other people out there, and, and then we started meeting people, and then it just became fun, and it hasn't really stopped since then. Okay. How did you go about explaining to your partner that you were a cross-dresser? That's the first. It was uh, probably some night I in one of our nightly talks, I just felt the need to just come out and tell her. Uh, as I had mentioned, we we're fairly uh, open with each other, and there's a certain amount of trust. And uh, I felt I felt I could I could talk to her, and she would be uh, surprisingly, not surprising. Uh, she's perhaps was a little concerned, but uh, supportive. And uh, I, th I think we both have the attitude if it makes something that makes each other happy and doesn't hurt anyone, uh, we go with it. Did you just come out and tell her? Did you have any materials or information or any sort of resources to help you with that? Not particularly, it was, I guess it was something that was bothering me, uh, that I felt I had the need and it was, I felt maybe something's wrong or maybe not wrong, I, I, I don't know. But uh, she's always been the one that uh, if I had to say something, I would go to her first. Um, we probably, well, after she found my clothes, we just you know, we talked about it, and I, I don't think I even understood it then, and she didn't. So we've got, we got some books, and we went to the library, and uh, we even read the Playboys and all that, and anything to do with cross-dressing, and tried to associate with the people that were the same as us and, and learn about it. And so it took a lot of years just to take the time and learn each little thing and what step and actually what we wanted to do in, involved with cross-dressing. So I guess we just really did it day at a time and, and talked it over and talked and, and grew together at it until we got to where we're at now. Nancy. Well, I had, uh, before I told my wife, I had read considerable amounts of information from studies and magazines and, and books uh, from the library. And um, I felt that I had a pretty good working knowledge of what cross-dressing uh, was about and, and how people experienced it and I'd read a lot of case studies uh, trying to see where where I fit in how did I uh, apply to the experiences of others and uh, when I decided to tell her we uh, each year we've gone for an escape weekend to Toronto uh, literally to get away from the kids and the hassles and work and just have some fun and uh, this was very awkward because I wasn't sure how to lead into it, but all, about a month before, a month and a half before, I told her that I'd like to talk to her about a few things when we go away and the kids aren't around. And of course, uh, I was afraid that that was going to lead her to begin to think of other things that were negative, like maybe I was seeing another woman or something of that sort. But I, I tried to keep it as low-key as I could. 
Uh, it still worked on her a little bit, which I'm sorry for, but I didn't know any other way to deal with that. And when we got to Toronto, um, I eventually came out and told her that I enjoyed cross-dressing. And I explained it to her, and her initial reaction was a little bit of surprise because obviously she didn't know this had been going on for close to 17 years. And, uh, you know, and when, you ha when you're married, you think your wife knows everything about you and that you know everything about her. So this was a bit of a, of a surprise for her. But as we talked, um, the thing that came out that was most impressive to me was that she became concerned about me, not about herself, about what all of this had done to me and how difficult it had been for me. And so after that, I decided, well, I'm going to try to provide her with all the information I can and let her take that information and digest it at whatever pace she felt comfortable with. And we would talk more about it. And I didn't rush her, and she's developed into a very supportive wife without really any efforts on my part. It's been through her efforts to find out more and have me answer questions whenever she had them. And um, then we eventually together led to the concept, uh, like, like Jody had experienced with tapestry, of finding out that other groups existed, and, or that groups themselves had existed, and we decided to try to join one or at least meet with people from one and find out more about it. That has led to a number of tremendous relationships and has uh, made this far easier for us to handle than we ever thought it would. I think, so, I think a big part of it is too is that you have a relationship not cross-dressing too, I think. I, mean, I think we all have good relationships mm -hmm. with our wives just in every day, so that makes them want to be part of this too. So it's an inner working thing that it's just not all one-sided or anything. It's just at least I think that's you know give and take a little bit. I guess is probably what. I think that's an important key. Uh, one other thing, uh, we had uh, answered an ad. We had picked up a magazine and uh, had written to another couple who we thought this was in the beginning of I guess the desire at least to. Uh, to start cross-dressing and uh, after a period of time writing letters back and forth we thought we would be compatible he met dressed uh, in normal clothes in a restaurant and uh, just that was very important the, the communication seeing that there were other real people out there like us uh, that had you know some of the the same honesty in their relationship, the, the men having the same kind of desires, and it, we sort of helped each other, and it grew until uh, this one particular couple was well, they were the first ones that talked us into coming to uh, the weekend here. Huh? Nancy mentioned something you, you pointed it out again, and uh, so I want to explore a little bit about how you found out about other people who cross-dress and what did it feel like for you to find out that you weren't the only one? Jody? Um, that, was, that was a real good feeling to finally know that other people were there and it was a normal activity. And, and uh, not only just other people, but other couples were very important because uh, at first, like, uh, like my wife's first interpretation, she was worried I was gay or, or I think there's always that overhanging. And to have just regular couples that it just made so much difference to us, and I, I think we've all found really great friends through this. It's uh, I think our best friends in the world we found through cross dressing. Now, and we get together not cross dressed or cross dressed, but it just it's a super band and really helps a lot to know other people. It's it's important to know too that you we've found you can't build a relationship just on cross dressing. As a matter of fact, after you meet others, your interests become so alive together that the cross-dressing is merely an element that allows you to come together sometimes. But you meet other times without the cross-dressing involved to, in, to get involved in the, the common interests that you have. So you find out that everybody's just like you and they're normal in their own way. I like the term that you use, normal. There's sort of a normalcy about it mm -hmm. uh, among those people who are in the cross-dressing community. So it's really not as bad or as outrageous or difficult as some people might make it to be. I think that also that having friends that cross-dress 
maybe are better friends because there's uh, there's a certain amount of honesty. Oh, yes, you definitely. You really don't have too much to it's hide. It's wonderful. And uh, it, it certainly makes things much easier, much more open. Talk some and more about the honesty. Oh, well, uh, you, you tend, you really don't put on a front. You eliminate the front you might, or the facade you might put on with other people. When you're with other men dressed as a man, if, if they're into football and bowling and, you know, uh, hunting and so on, and you have any interests along that line, you, you put on a certain air about the whole thing in, in the way you communicate. When you're with others who are cross-dressing, those, those walls come down. They're no longer necessary. You can be who you really are and be honest about everything you say and not worry that somebody's going to, uh, you know, condemn you for what you said. So that's, that, that honesty is, it's a rarity. It's almost like at times I wish all men were cross-dressers. Yeah, it would just open up so many more avenues. Right. Just, you don't get that macho thing. Like usually when you meet men, it's who did this and who's that and who's this. And you just, you don't even have any of that. It's just gone. You just have a true relationship. And even when you're cross-dressed, it's not like you're always talking about cross-dressing either. I mean, you talk about art or whatever you're into or whatever it's just theater or anything you want to do it's people are just a lot more open and alive I think when they're cross-dressed let's go back to, to uh, couples and relationships again why did you conceal your cross-dressing from your partner when you first got married Ben I really when I first got married I didn't really have any desire uh, as I look back over the years, maybe in my adolescence, although there wasn't any desire to cross-dress that I, I could feel, there was, uh, I guess, I, I remember perhaps being impressed by uh, men wearing women's clothes without relating anything. Uh, it just, I remember remembering of having uh, maybe seen a magazine with, with a man, uh, a drag queen, or uh, perhaps someone who was perhaps transgendered. It was certainly in more interesting, but I, I never related anything to myself until much later on, where uh, perhaps it was a combination of trying to escape from the, the stress of business uh, and the everyday activities that I, I really felt the need, perhaps, for some sort of a, uh, a role reversal as an escape, as perhaps a temporary escape. And uh, slowly, uh, with the help of my, my wife, and talking and doing a little bit at a time, uh, there's, I guess, a little bit of a, a blossoming. Uh, and it's certainly something I enjoy. The question again. Why did you conceal the cross-dressing? Well, in, at the time I first met my wife, um, and ever since then, we've been madly in love, and we just enjoy the love part, I mean, just the sharing and the caring. And uh, as a cross-dresser, not really knowing that this is what my destiny was, this something I had done intermittently throughout my life up to that point, uh, I hadn't conceded defeat yet to the idea of putting it behind me. It was something that I thought I was going to be able to eliminate uh, with marriage, with children, with all the ramifications of owning property and working a career and, and being a breadwinner and so on, the role that I knew I was going to be expected to fulfill. And so I, uh, I decided over time this was something I, I felt I could lick, something that I could put behind me and out of my life. And obviously, um, I have not succeeded in that at all. <laughs> but you really have succeeded. <laughs> I have succeeded you in many, <laughs> that's right, in many ways uh, that at that time I had never even crossed my mind. And at that time, too, I also didn't know about the world of cross dressing and that there were others. Um, I had seen magazines with drag queens and female impersonators, and ca uh, occasionally in a movie or something, I might have caught a glimpse of something that had to do with uh, cross dressing. But uh, that wasn't telling me that there were other people like me out there. That was telling me there were people who did the cross-dressing, but they did it for other motives or other reasons.
for me, it was just the pleasure and the enjoyment of being able to transform myself into a woman. And so, uh, uh, that's what I think. I think it was probably, this is back when I was 19 years old, so it's like I was, I felt guilty about it, I think. I didn't understand it. I didn't know where it was coming from. And it was so-called not normal behavior. And, and uh, I was just married and just, you know, it felt like you were supposed to be the breadwinner in the mail and, and doing this was not in the same mode at all. And it just took a lot of years just to learn to accept it and that it's not a problem and you can still be the breadwinner and you can still do all the things you're supposed to do and you can even be better at those because of what you do cross-dressing because it, it just makes you more sensitive and more of a real person in your everyday life. I think that's true. How difficult was it for you, the three of you, to integrate the cross-dressing into the rest of your life? It's Actually, it's been, aside from the fact that we haven't told our children, you know, and did not want to, felt that was on a need-to-know basis and that they didn't need to know, it's really been a rather easy transition because we, um, we share common interests with regard to, to clothing and, and um, while her styles are different than mine, she, she and I shop well together and we started doing things together that were almost like two women doing them together rather than uh, man and woman and yet she never lost, uh, never lost me as a man uh, in our relationship and uh, I never failed to portray uh, the man for her because I'm her husband and I enjoy that role. Um, but that, that's, uh, to me, the, the communication skills we've developed as well have been fantastic. Um, we, we read each other's mind sometimes now Sort of like on Radar, or Radar and MASH, who used to read his boss's mind and be able to come out and say what he was ready to say. We do that sometimes with regard to an item in the store that I look at that I want to buy, and she knows already, and she's already looking in the rack at the size that I, she knows will, will fit me. So it's, it's a communication that has gone on. That, uh, before that, I, I think the male side of me would not allow to come out for fear that it might signal something to her that she wasn't aware of. Babs, have you had any difficulty integrating this part of you into your life and your relationship? No, much like Nancy Ann, uh, my wife and I, uh, we share some of the, for example, the shopping. Uh, and we, uh, I, th I think she knows, again, my tastes. And she's helped me. She's been supportive. But it's another activity that. Uh, that we can do together. And uh, it, I think it, in that respect, it's perhaps kept us closer together. We still have our own separate interests, but uh, it's one more bond. I think for, for a lot of years, we did have trouble doing that because um, we really didn't know where it was going to lead to or we didn't understand it at all. And probably just up to the last couple of years when we got out into the public and, and met a lot of people and stuff, that's when it really integrated and it became a big part of our life and, and our everyday thing. And it's right now, and we just smile a lot more together every day, whether I'm dressed or undressed. And it's just, it works beautiful now. It's almost, I'm sorry, it's, it's almost like sort of an inside joke. Uh, it's, it's something that we can smile at mm -hmm. each other. Yeah. And uh, it's almost like playing a trick on the rest of the world. Yeah, right. It's our own little and, secret or whatnot. Right. right. And people it's, will say something and you can just look at each other yeah. and you know or something, you know, it's kind of nice. I don't want to paint uh, an unrealistic picture that's just too rosy. So what I want to know is what kind of stress is caused by the cross-dressing, your cross-dressing? I think there is a certain amount of stress in everyone's relationship or everyone's life for those of us who are cross-dressers. So what is that stress for you, and how do you deal with it, Jody? Okay, I, we really, the only stress we probably have right now is, is that our children don't know and our, our business people, and we, they, they, back home everything's, nobody has any idea of what we're doing. So probably the only stress we ever have now is whether that ever happens and then how to deal with that if it does happen. Over the years up to till we started going out, there was a lot of stress because with having kids, you didn't know, and we didn't know what it was going to end up being or how we were going to be comfortable with it. And 
it just was like constantly, or I'd want to dress and she wouldn't want me to, or, or we didn't know how to control it and we didn't really know what to do. And we spent a lot of time in motel rooms getting dressed and, you know, walking out the hallway or something like that, you know. After you get all that behind you, then you just get out and you meet people. And I think people is the, the big key, because once you get to know people, I think it just, it works. It really works well. Share so, the load. Yeah. Right, and just share the load and you have somebody else. And, and not only you, but your wives have other wives to deal with, and, and it, that helps an awful lot. I think uh, the stress factor that we deal with is uh, my wife's concerns about where this is headed. Uh, it's kind of like, um, well, just because we come out and we do things together um, with me cross-dressed and when we, as we're relating to other people, uh, she wonders whether this is going to become more predominant of our time together later on, especially after our children are off on their own and we're retired and, and uh, we're situated comfortably or as comfortably as we can be. And uh, it's not a question to which I have an answer most of the time. I, I only know that uh, I want to continue to enjoy it. Uh, I know, too, that as I, as I get older, I feel that I enjoy it more when I'm in the company of other cross-dressers. It's not a kick for me to dress and pass in a store by myself in order to, to feel a high from that, as others have told me that's what they feel. I'm more interested in, in looking as good as I can with what I have and doing so together with others who are interested in doing the same thing for themselves. And other cross-dressers are all interested in doing that to bring out whatever their best qualities are and to work on them and to share ideas and tips and so on. But the concern has been as to where it's going and she knows there's no concept of transsexualism here because I'm not interested in, in a, a sex change. Um, and uh, I think her concern has to do, and rightfully so, with how many days of the week am I going to do this and how often uh, will I be involved in this. Uh, and I think my, my gut reaction is that that will be dictated by us together. It won't be dictated by me alone. That's what I think is the best thing is to keep your wife be part of it. Right. And then it's not going to overpower you because you're going to do it together. Right. You know? But that, that as a stress factor is still there and it's always at the back of her mind. And uh, I try to uh, do everything I can to make her feel comfortable with it and then also give her space so that she can... Uh, you know, if she wants to back off for a little while and have a chance to uh, think about it and then maybe come back with other questions or ideas or suggestions, uh, we do that. But we still go to Toronto non-dress for our vacation every year. So that is, a, that is uh, one still thing. Still something that, you kept. That's right. And we try to do a number of things that are targeted that are husband and wife. Yeah. Much the same way, the, there's a certain amount of stress because, again, business associates, the family, uh, we don't want them to know. Uh, and I guess there's that kind of fear, but uh, much, also much in the same way, there's, because to me, it's a lot of fun, the, the desire is very, very strong. Uh, there's a time that we have to, I have to draw the line, or we, we talk about it, uh, there's, I have responsibilities in my male role, and uh, that comes first. Uh, this is really the fun part, and the le it's a leisure activity, I guess. Uh, how far as uh, our responsibilities to family uh, change, uh, the relationship may change. The, uh, perhaps the cross-dressing role will get stronger where I'll have more leisure time, whatever, to do what I'd like to do. But uh, there's still a responsibility. Nancy Ann brought up uh, a point when she mentioned about transsexualism and sex reassignment surgery. And um, there's a lot of interest and discussion and talk and use in the cross-dressing community of female hormones. And I'd like to ask you a little bit about that. How do you feel about the subject of male cross-dressers taking female hormones? Is that something that you would consider? Uh, is, is that down the road for you? Um, let's start with Jody. No, for me it's not. For me it's, I'm just against it. I don't think you should alter your body and I think you can have as much fun without doing it. 
And as long as you're just doing it for cross-dressing instead of, if you're transsexual, then you need to do that. But I don't think you need to alter your body. So it's not going to be for me. I'm always concerned about health concerns and what medications can do to you. And I don't think uh, people should take medications, especially hormones or steroids for that matter, without consultation from their physician. Uh, when it comes to whether or not I would ever consider them, no, they're not in my future. I have no interest in making a change in my body physically. I enjoy the transformation process to look as much like a woman as I can, but I think I can do that without actually going through a physical change. Mm -hmm. Perhaps? What uh, I've read about hormones and uh, in speaking to some people that are, are transsexuals, uh, Number one, I think the uh, hormones can be very dangerous without medical supervision. Also, there's an emotional factor. Uh, as far as myself, it's really not, not in my future, not at the present time. I can't foresee it. Okay. Um, let's go back again to uh, the cross-dressing and how it fits into the rest of your life. Do you feel that being a cross-dresser has made you a better person? More specifically, has it made you a better man when you're in your masculine role? Um, ben, so you... uh, as a man, or perhaps even more important as a person, I feel that uh, I'm a little more sensitive, certainly to uh, my wife's needs, and I think in, in general, to really, uh, interacting with, with people in general. I, as in my female role, I uh, try and see things from a different point of view. And I think that helps me be a better man in that respect. Well, I feel that I've come to a, certainly a much better understanding of what women go through in life by trying to portray a woman. And uh, I feel um, that as far as the male side of my personality is concerned, uh, I was never a macho individual to begin with, uh, or tried to portray that, uh, but now I've even gained somewhat of a loathing for those who do. I just don't enjoy that because I don't think it's necessary, even though people use it as a protective device. So for me, as a, as a male, um, Babs was right about being much more sensitive to other people, how they feel and what they think, regardless of whether or not they're they're six feet six inches tall and weigh 270 pounds or whether they're a small person or or whatever uh, whatever their background uh, I've become totally non-judgmental as a result of it and I, I feel so happy about that it's like you know, a tremendous burden has been lifted off me because I don't have to spend my time judging other people uh, definitely it's helped uh, I think uh, I'm a lot more caring of an individual I'm uh, not so concerned about conquering the world and I just real open I'm a heck of a lot better father since I've just come out and the you know just more sensitive to the kids needs or to anybody's needs really and and, uh, and I don't feel bad showing my emotions as a man as were before you would seem to hide them and now I can show my emotions as a masculine person too a lot better okay. this is going to be the final question in this part of the, the tape if a friend of yours who was a crossdresser came to you and said, I'm thinking about getting married, and I don't know whether or not I should tell my fiancé before the wedding. What kind of advice would you give that person, Nancy? I think I would advise that person to, to try to set the stage to tell her and tell her about it ahead of time. Uh, I didn't with my wife, uh, and at the time I didn't realize where I was headed with this. But if he has that inclination and those desires and some experience with it, uh, I think uh, he's going to have to take that risk because I think she deserves to know. I've, I've always, after, as I said, I kept it from my wife for a while in our lives, but I found out that, you know, she's the person I can share everything with. Um, she loves me and cares about me, and if, if his fiance feels the same way, I think together they'll find a way to work it out. I agree exactly the same thing. The only thing I would wonder is if they were had a strong enough relationship to start with to accept that. Because a lot of people meet this month and get married next month. But if they were, if they have a real relationship, uh, you know, if it's been a year or two and they've really grown together and they care for each other, then I would say definitely say, do it beforehand, and so that you can really have a, an open relationship. 
I wish that I would have done it, but it took two years and, and she found out accidentally, but it's taken us a lot of years to grow that probably we could have grown through if we were open in the beginning. But I don't know if we were strong enough before we started to know we probably would have and I ended a relationship in the beginning, probably. Perhaps. My question would be, how strong is the relationship now uh, with your fiancé? And th I think that would be the key. Uh, it would be most important to make sure that relationship is strong enough that uh, it'll work. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, they might be, uh, they may, may not be as lucky as uh, Jody and Nancy. As the interviewer, I'm not supposed to put my own point of view into this, but d don't you think that an early discussion is a test of the strength of that relationship? Mm -hmm. And if it isn't strong enough, wouldn't the cross-dresser be better off not getting married? Well, do you think that you, you develop that relationship not the day you get married? I think, you, I think it takes a lot of years to develop a true relationship with, a, with your loved one or whatever. And that's, uh, I think you know, I think definitely my wife and I are stronger now than we were 18 or 20 years ago. So, I, you know, I, I think it's easier for her to cope with it now because because of the, not just what we've learned over the 18 years in cross-dressing, but just because what we built together over the 18 years. Or, so. You've suggested it's sort of like a judgment call as to whether or not the relationship is strong enough. And as you said, maybe they are better off not entering that kind of a relationship or entering it that soon. It might put things off a little bit until they got to know each other better if he told her. My feeling is it would be better to do that. I've seen too many people who after they found out and shortly after the marriage, um, it's been misery for both, both parties. And uh, I think if I had it to do over again, I would have told my wife before we got married. I believe that. Uh, there's the risk involved, and uh, I, I think it's a balancing act. How strong is it now, or how strong may it be in the future? Uh, it's, I, I would hate to generalize. So the, the point, though, is that in some cases, it might be better not to say something ahead yeah. of time and allow the relationship to grow a little bit and test the waters and see if it got stronger so that it, if somebody's out there viewing this video and they're recently married and they haven't told their wife yet, they shouldn't feel so bad. Right, right, yeah. that's true. It's hard enough to make a marriage work without cross-dressing, but you want to make sure it's good and solid. And, and, and the cross-dressing, I think, can sure. strengthen it once you do get it involved in it. It definitely adds a lot to life, or our life anyways. I, th I think it's a call on how strong is the foundation to begin with. Yeah. Where where are you now, and where are you looking at? How well do you know your your spouse or your intended, and how well do they know you? Well, that's a great yes. segue because in the next segment we're going to talk to your partners. And I thank you all for joining us, and we'll see you later on in the video. Sounds okay. good. Thank you. My first question is: Did you know anything at all about cross dressing? before your partner told you? We'll start on the end with Carol. No, I didn't know anything. I um, didn't go to the library after he told me. I just wanted him to talk to me about it, so he explained things to me. Okay. Sure. I didn't know anything about cross-dressing, nothing. Um, she basically just taught me. I knew absolutely nothing about cross-dressing. I did go to the library, um, and then it was a lot of time with Nancy talking to me. So what was your initial reaction? Ms. Sandy, and we'll go back. My initial reaction, surprisingly enough, was um, relief because Nancy had told me that he wanted to talk, she wanted to talk to me about something very special. And I thought um, I was competing with another woman, literally another woman. So the relief came when I knew I wasn't um, going to be out on the streets or whatever, or having to, to deal with that. And, and from there, it was support because I truly loved my husband, and I knew it was never going to be uh, leaving him. It was going to be my getting educated, and we were going to communicate and, and be able to uh, work this out like we have anything else. My first reaction was very mixed. I 
found her clothes in the trunk of her car. I went to look for a frisbee and I found stockings. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, so I didn't know why the clothes were there. And so at first, it, like Sandy, I was relieved because I just figured they were another woman's clothes. Um, I just, I really didn't know how I felt at first, I guess is what it really boils down to. But I knew it was, I wasn't going to give up. I had mixed emotions. Um, the fact that Babs did tell me uh, without my uh, finding out sneakily helped a great deal. And we talked an awful lot. We did it a lot in cars so our children wouldn't be around and things were freer, taking rides and talking, but really talking. And I could put my foot down and say, well, why are you doing this? Are you gay? Or what is the problem? And once she explained to me that she's not gay, she just feels like a different person. Um, all her stresses are gone, and she feels better. And that's what I thought I, too. At first, I, first of all, I thought that she oh. was gay. <laughs> yeah. You know, I figured that must be the reason. Right. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Is that what and, you thought too, Sandy? I really didn't. Nancy said that that uh, she was not gay, and I believed that. As soon as she told me she wasn't, I believed her. But that's the first thing that I thought of. That's very yeah. common. That's yeah. the first right. thing that enters almost anyone's mind when they learn about a male who cross-dresses. Mm -hmm. Well, he must be gay. So right. that's the stereotype. Yeah. But it's not true. In, yeah. in your cases, it's not true. It's it, not there true. are gay cross-dressers. Oh, yeah. But the majority right. are not. Right. It also helped that, that Babs wanted to stay with me cross-dressing rather than go to a guy. Mm -hmm. And it, 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 would, it became a security. It really did. It was like, I'm not losing him to anybody. He's just becoming Babs. From my, from my knowledge, that, from learning uh, over the past three years that I've known, most of the um, cross-dressers uh, cross are the most faithful that you can possibly have mm -hmm. to their wives. Why do you think that is? I hadn't really thought about that. I think part of it would be if, in fact, the, the wife is supporting. Um, they're in a very nice world. Um, they, have, they have the best of both worlds. They can, they can be themselves. They don't have to feel as if they're going out and trying new directions and um, going into untested waters and um, um, being unsafe, I guess, is part of it. Um, and I think truly um, the other part is because uh, they manifest uh, female instincts um, and kindness and gentleness. Um, I think that all comes out as part of it. So do you think that it, it ends up bringing you closer together? Oh, oh yes. yes. Definitely. Yes. And I think that we, we were talking about this before. One of the things is getting past the point of asking why it's happening. So why Nobody is understands. not that important? No. No, it is happening. It's, it's a reality. It's there. They don't know why they cross-dress. They can't explain it, so there's no sense trying to drive them crazy with constant questions about why they are cross-dressing. You accept it as a part of the person and go on from there, and I think you can live a very happy, normal life, and I think the three of us do. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Did any of you at any time ever feel like he was cross-dressing because there was something lacking in you, that somehow this was your fault. Did any of you feel that way? That's often, we hear that a lot from wives sometimes. Uh, I didn't really think it was my fault at all, but I wondered, you know, if I had something to do with it, mm -hmm. but I didn't really think it was my fault. I think mine, I mine was more um, a question of, not that it was my fault, but why um, pick somebody? I, I'm not a, a real fancy person. I don't like the real frills. Um, and if this is the, the type of, of woman that, that you're personifying, why would you pick a woman to live with that was, that was not? And I guess there was some self-doubt at that point for me. I, I didn't feel it was my fault. Uh, not necessarily your fault, but did you ever feel that there was something, something lacking that no. drove? No, we had a good relationship okay. before, and um, it it's, has since become better. There's more understanding of her. 
um, where she would do things and I wouldn't understand why she was doing them. Now I, I understand. So it, you get a special band. Definitely. You're just real special. There isn't anything else. If you understand, you can, you can deal with it. Do you have trouble with pronouns? She, he, him, her? Yes. Mm -hmm. Just listen to this and you... <laughs> does, does it bother you? Did, did you have difficulty learning to say her, she, versus him, her? Him, he, him, yeah. whatever. You know what I mean? Yes, I at, at times I still do. I, you, yeah. know, it, it, you catch it because you're still dealing with the whole person. Right. When we're going away for a weekend, I sit in the car as we're driving and I go, call her Babs, just call her Babs. Babs, she's only Babs this weekend, Babs. And you have to really remember that. And then on the way home, it's say, call her Bob, call him. Because <laughs> <laughs> after a trip I did, I was calling through the house and I started to say Nancy and my kids were home. <laughs> and I mean, I stumbled over work. that part yeah. of the work. <laughs> So there, there's these little things that you trip over once in a while that you, you have to constantly stay aware of. Because it's not an everyday occurrence. It happens only when there's availability for her to be Babs. And if it happened every day, it would be part of the routine. routine. But since it doesn't happen every day, you have to really think before you speak. And it's no strain. It really is, and it, it becomes fun. No. And it's not permanent change. That's why it's hard. Okay. Right. I'm going to ask you a difficult question. It's, if I gave you a pill, and I told you that this pill would positively, absolutely stop your partner's cross-dressing, and all of the feelings that go with that, would you give your partner that pill? Cindy. I would honestly have to say there are times I would say yes, and there are times I would say no. And the times that I would say no are becoming more and more. But part of that is just um, my own changes, um, physically and mentally. Um, but no, for the most part, I would not change things. I love things the way they are. I'm having a great time. No, I wouldn't. Why not? It's because we're having so much fun. We've met so many great people. Um, it's opened up a whole new world for us. And I, I think another reason I want is it just has brought us so much closer together. And, and Jody's getting to be who she really is and who she really wants to be. And I think everybody should have that opportunity to be who they really are. So, no, I wouldn't. Definitely not. <laughs> uh, it makes, Why am I not surprised? Well, I, <laughs> no, she really, it be, makes her a whole person. And if that's the whole person, I love this person. Regardless, if that's what makes it a whole person, let it be that way. I'm, there's no... I think the other thing that you have to say is it makes us all whole people, too. Because we can give our all mm. to our mates. Good point. Right. Yeah, excellent. It is a good point. Thank yeah. you. I'll give you a check. <laughs> okay. Sometimes, um, in trying to explain cross-dressing to other people, uh, it's often compared to things like drug addiction or alcohol addiction, in the sense that there is a burden, uh, a stigma. There's a social stigma attached to it, and there is a burden of secrecy that goes along with the stigma. Can you give me any kind of sense of what it's like to have to keep a secret like that? Is, is that stressful? Or have you found that you, you can deal with that? Well, you have someone to share it with right off the bat. And um, when you have friends like these friends, uh, you, you have to be able to deal with it. Yes, there's stress. I mean, it's hard uh, keeping it from the kids, keeping it from the family, but um, it's a secret that I don't think I would change. 
And if there were a time when I'd have to tell the world, I don't think I would be worried about it if I had to. Okay, sure. It's a good secret. It's, there is a lot of stress in it. And like Carol said, it's, it's mainly to deal with like the children. You know, you're just always afraid that the children are gonna find out. Um, our children don't know. I don't feel they need to know. So that's something that, that's the stress part of it for me because making sure that they don't find out. But it, it's a great secret. It's, it's a special secret that mm -hmm. we have together. Same. Yeah, I, I, I agree. Um, the stress is, is trying to keep it from the kids um, because you really don't want to put them in the position of having to keep the secret too. So the, the stress is coming not from the fact that your partners are cross-dressers, it's not no. self-destructive behavior. No. Absolutely the not. The stress is because society at large doesn't understand. That's right. So Definitely. you don't want children, right. family Definitely. members to have to deal with that burden. Right. Yes. It, Absolutely. Am I getting that right? Yes. Yep. Okay. If uh, I asked you what kind of advice would you have for a wife who has just learned that her husband is a cross-dresser? What kind of resources can you point her to? What would you tell her? First of all, to really talk to him. To really um, find out if he knows why. If there is no reason, then together look for resources for magazines. There are TV shows. Um, there are movies, books. Uh, there's so much about cross-dressers that they can learn. Um, there's no reason why a wife has to say, well, I don't understand this, so I don't want this. If they have communication, if they can talk, if they love each other, right? it yeah. makes so much difference. I think that's the biggest thing is just talking. You have to talk. You have to talk together. And then the other thing is getting into groups and getting out and yes. meeting other people. That's that helped us yes. a lot, you know, just getting together with other people. Sandy, you and Nancy are actually involved with a, a very organized support group. Right, and we have a couple of wives, myself and one other, that uh, meet on one one-to-one -one basis with any wives that uh, want to come and talk to us, and not as counselors, not as psychologists, as people that are willing to listen and say, hey, what you're feeling is fine. You're not abnormal you're normal, you have the right to have certain fears, and this isn't, um, this isn't a condemnation of you or anything else. And just truly being the, the definition of our group, which is a support group. And uh, we meet them wherever they wanna uh, meet and talk. But we advocate that they um, read your book. Um, Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, I think it's the best book out on the market because it's straightforward and it's not colored in um, terms of either the wife or the husband. Um, and I think you can get some very straight, and I think it gives them a point of communication and a point of talking. It gives them um, that framework that you need because the wife really, for the most part, has no idea what kind of questions to even ask at the beginning. I think in the beginning, the wives feel that they're really alone. Right, yeah. totally. And, and you're not, you're not alone. We yeah, met a woman that had known for 20 years and thought that all the feelings were wrong, but she had never talked to anybody. And only in the past six months has she been able to say, I'm not crazy. I do have these feelings, and they are okay to have. So for 19 and a half years, they went through almost a living hell because there wasn't enough communication, and there wasn't the information out there that there is now. Um, this is a question that comes up a lot. Um, a lot of women don't know how to quite deal with this. So I'm going to be just blunt. How does sex fit into a cross-dressing role in the relationship? Is that a part of it? Um, if it is, how do you feel about it? If it isn't, how do you feel about that? Karen? Um, I don't go to bed with Babs. Uh, if she wants to be Babs for the night, she sleeps with me, but not near me. I mean, we sleep in the same bed, of course. But um, 
But there's no sex, no sexual not, contact. Not with Babs. It's just Babs. No. Because I say to myself, I'm not a lesbian. Okay. When Babs becomes her other self, um, she's more than welcome. And uh, we have a good life. <laughs> sure. She's still the same person. Okay. When he's still my husband, I need a husband and I want a husband, and that's what I have. <laughs> and it's, everything's good, you know. Um, I'm not a lesbian either. Um, Thank you. I think, <laughs> <laughs> I think at first you, that thought crosses your mind, mm -hmm. you know. Let, let me be, uh, I want to be clear on this. I, what I hear you saying is that, yes, sometimes that you will have relations with your husband while he's cross-dressed, is that when, what you When saying? he's dressed, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And but he's still him. Right. He's still my husband. It's just close. It's close. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm with Carol. Um, it, it's two separate things, but our, our love making is much more intense over the last three years. But as strictly man and woman, um, when Nancy comes to bed, we sleep in the same bed. Um, but we are not together in the sense of, of sexual behavior. Nancy comes to bed as himself, whatever the kind of, as the male, mm -hmm. then we have a wonderful time. Great time. And it's even, oh yeah, it's even more intense than it was for the first 17 years of our marriage. And we thought it was good then. Mm -hmm. When you're out together though, do you ever feel uncomfortable um, appearing in what what seems to be a lesbian relationship that doesn't does that bother you at all no i no. go out with my friend that's that's so my friend. it's like being yeah. out with a friend oh, right. I that's my friend now yeah. and my best friend exactly and it's wonderful to have both your husband and your best friend and your lover all in one and just and with have you all the time all the time all the time i can share anything okay well thank you very much and uh what we're going to do now is talk to both of you, your partners and you together. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. What's the single biggest issue that still remains in your relationship that relates to your partner being a cross-dresser? And let's start with Carol and Babs in the middle. The biggest problem? Single biggest issue. The time it takes her to get dressed. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that an issue? Um, because I've always been on time all my life, and waiting for her, it's um, a matter of my not being on time. We're late for uh, different appointments that we have with other cross-dressers, and that's an issue. But aside from that, there's nothing wrong with her. There's no other issue in the relationship? Not with her. Jody and Char. I think ours is probably just, my biggest thing is if the children would find out. I don't feel it's right now, so that would be our biggest thing right now. Is yeah, they if just the don't children... need to know. That's all right now. They don't need to know now. It would be fun if they did know, because I think we'd all get along great. But I don't know if the trauma would be worth the happiness afterwards or yeah. the experience. Mm -hmm. okay. And Nancy and Sandy. Uh, I think the biggest issue is for me, and that's wondering when the kids are gone, because ours don't know either, um, how far Nancy will want to go, how often, um, is it going to be 24 hours a day, seven days a week, or and I, will I still have my husband? Okay. Um, overall, in your relationship, has your partner's cross-dressing had a positive effect or has it had a negative effect on the relationship? And this time we'll start with Sandy and Nancy. I, I, I think it's been a positive impact. Uh, we've always been able to communicate, but we can communicate even better now because we truly understand each other and know the total person. For us, for us my cross-dressing was the secret in our lives. And once that was out, there were no other secrets. There were no other things to keep hidden. and. As she said, we're far more open with each other. We talk a lot more now than ever before. And uh, I think that's, for us, very positive because we 
tend to compromise on things we talk about. And we, we you know, don't so much give in to each other as just accept what the other has to say and, and feel that it's important we compromise. Johnny and Chuck, positive, negative? Definitely positive. In, in what yeah, respect? There's no question. Just the same thing as what Sandy says, that we're a lot more open with each other now. Um, just real. I've got, we're real. real. Yeah, yeah, that's the bottom real. line. Yeah, we're just it. real. It's real. And she's a great friend. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we have a ball together. We, we enjoy each other. Babs, Carol. She's my best friend. It's a positive, um, it's both positive and negative. You have to understand that. The positive part is that uh, she becomes Babs and she is free of stress, free of aggravation, free of any kind of. Um, Problems, all the problems that she's had in the past or that day have been released. When the wig goes on, she's a new person. The negative is only that we have to sneak out of the house because our children don't know either. And um, it, that, it leaves questions. I mean, that they are constantly um, looking at the fact that I have a lot of wigs. They don't see me wear wigs. It's, it's a little negative there. But uh, in general, we're able to, it, it strengthened the relationship. Uh, I think the, the honesty, the openness, uh, we're able to share more and understand each other, each other's feelings, and uh, to look at uh, things, some things the way she does. I think the best friends has a lot of merit because um, I know we are best friends there's just absolutely. no way yes, yeah. like yeah. this, yeah. it's, this is just how it is there's nothing, like nothing that you can't share now yeah it's right. like so all together like, yeah. and it's yeah. like real right. friends so. yep yeah. okay. there, there isn't that male female separation between what's male and what's female it's sort of like it's blended together so so now you don't have that uh, you're just that all separation. people we're people that's right, right. we're people, people. like people. they said we're true we're true to you know being ourselves, ourselves. And, and our relationship don't you think that could be very threatening to some people, though, to blur the line? For a lot of people who feel very comfortable with very rigid role, rules about what the roles are, when you blur those roles, doesn't, wouldn't that make people be nervous? How, how would you, you know, answer that kind of, if a wife came to you and said, I'm concerned about this blurring of roles, what, what would you tell them? Well, with our relationship all the way down the line since we were married, and, and I mean, I've only known about the cross-dressing for the last three years, we have always shared everything, um, whether it's the duties around the house because we both work. Um, it's just one more thing that we've shared. If, you have, if, if you're not secure enough in who you are and you can't let your spouse be as secure as they can be in what they truly are, then you, you're, you're losing. And it, uh, a big part of of their relationship will be behind a door that she will never know and she will never understand the person totally. I understand Nancy a lot better now and why some things happened earlier in the marriage um, now because I, I know why the, why it was happening. And that was all, all of, of course prior to when I communicated to her that I was a cross-dresser so I couldn't tell her and I was afraid to to let certain things give her uh, the idea that there was something different about me. I had to portray that role. Now, as you said, those, that fine line is, is kind of blurred. Um, I think it's important and meaningful that it is blurred. I, I don't, I don't want to be a macho male. She's not interested that I be a macho male, and yet before I had to portray that as much as possible because my mind told me that's what I had to do for her. Communication Not is that most, oh, I'm sorry, um, communication is the most important thing in any marriage. Yeah. And uh, in in a marriage that where you're told about it at a later stage of your married life, um, it helps that you've always been able to communicate and this was just an added little something that they had to tell you. Something to work out or right. whatever. But, and, but you work it out. Yeah. But life and marriage is a compromise That's all right. the way down the line. Uh -huh. And if people that are, quote, from straight relationships think that they don't compromise, then they don't communicate either. Right. right. We've, just added, we've just added one more facet to it. It's, it's all a balance. And That's it right. It mm -hmm. makes the, the two, instead of two opposites, 
makes it easier to balance by coming closer together and understanding each other. But one thing you think too, like you said about not being macho, the other bit, like in our regular life, we're just regular men. And just, I mean, you wouldn't know that you cross dress. Yeah, we yeah. cross dress. I mean, we just we live our activities like normal. Right. Nobody's going to say right. well, there's a cross dresser or whatnot. And just we're just right. regular, and, right. and we're regular together. We just have fun right. together too. Right. Exactly. Just, right. Let me go back to something that, that they, uh, I, I think it was Nancy and Sandy touched on, and I think, personally, I think it's real important. Let me ask you how important you feel that communicating and negotiating, communication skills, negotiation skills, how big a role does that play in your relationship, and not just with cross-dressing, but your entire relationship? Oh, it's the whole ball of wax. It's the whole thing. There's no question. It's the whole ball of wax. What kind of marriage could you have? Let's try Carol and Babs. Tell me how important it is. What kind of marriage could you possibly have if you don't communicate? You have to be, if there is something wrong, Babs will, well, Babs as her other self, even, would would not leave me alone until they found out, she found out what was wrong. And if I couldn't communicate, then I have the problem. It's, it's so important to understand the other person. You're living with this person. You want to know all that you can about them so that you can help them, that, so that you can, um, if they're troubled, find out what it is and comfort them. And it's a form, it's, everything is a form of communication. communication and it also it? can be defined as truth. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's very hard to face the truth and tell somebody else the truth. But that's where the communication and being honest comes in. Now you can look at each other, you can look at other couples, and we've met some wonderful couples. Um, and everything is straightforward. I, I, I think there's less game playing in, in the cross-dressing community um, than in the regular world. Oh, Definitely. yeah, right. Yeah. There's nothing's hidden. Just there's all real nothing, people. Just everybody yeah. Everybody is real. All the fronts have been broken down. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's the communication part. What about negotiating and compromise? Um, let, let's try with, with Char and, and Jody, because Jody indicated that there was some issues when he first told you. So what kinds of negotiating and, and compromises have you worked out? You're talking about like over the years and how we, mm -hmm. how we started like a lot. A lot, yeah. yeah. Um, we compromise a lot you know we we do in everything we do, we do though. yeah in everything like every we do it's life. not just it's not just in the cross-dressing it's it's in everything that we do um, how we, important is that negotiating for what each of you want I think it's real important yeah. because we have to make each other happy it's real important but it doesn't yeah. become you an issue you just yourself. do it right. automatically yeah. you just do you know, you know yeah. I'm concerned with her she's concerned with me it's yeah. not something Nego you know, I don't think negotiating is yeah, the right word you don't sit down and negotiate you, you just you I just feel for you, do you it feel for, for each me. other because yeah. you love each other. Yeah. Yeah. You don't yes. negotiate. Exactly. Yeah. Well, yeah. you might not see it as a negotiation, but it is. It's a yeah. transaction well, yeah. because each of you get something out of it. Yeah. Right. And, and sometimes what happens is a cross-dresser will state a position, I want this, and that's it. Or a wife will say, I want you to stop, and that's the end of it. There's, there's no open door for compromise there. So that's what I'm trying to find out. What, where were the, where were the negotiation? What, what kind of things did you negotiate on, or did you compromise on? Um, Sandy and Nancy, maybe. It's really hard. To it's think. hard. Yeah. Compromise is compromise is a workable uh, concept, but the negotiation part, I guess, maybe. Um, well, it's a give and take. Yeah. yeah. It, oh, but so yeah. is a marriage. Yeah, I Fine. think I think it has a lot to do with um, if you want something. Rather than placing it almost as a demand on your spouse, instead you're going to present it as an option or a concept for both of you to think about. And you don't make a decision about it right then and there, but because you're introducing it to your spouse, you have to give her or him a chance to, you know, to think it over. And you, that's part of what I would call a negotiation process. It's not a, a, a demand. And it's not saying it's going to be this way, and, and there's no negotiation to be done. Uh, for us, we've always kind of taken those things and brought the priorities up, discussed them. And some of those things we 
didn't come to agreement on right away went on the back burner. They didn't die, but they were brought up later on at another time when we felt this is a better time for us to talk about it and negotiate it out. Or maybe something has been thrown out onto the table and it's kind of left there, but the other person thinks about it and then they bring it up when they feel that they're ready comfortable and comfortable it. with it. Yeah. Right. I it's correct. not, I, I don't think, I know with, with Nancy and I, if there were um, a demand put on the table, there's a definite difference be between a demand, I will have it this way, and what do you think about this? Yeah. Yeah. But we okay. just don't do demands. I, mean, no, I don't think no. anybody right. does do that. We, we just don't, don't do that. that. No. Uh, part of our program. Rather events. than negotiate implying an adversarial relationship, I think uh, with us, we both have the same overall goal, each other's welfare. Mm -hmm. And it makes it easier. I mean, there are, mm -hmm. we each have different, perhaps a little different agendas, or we want to do certain things, but it, it makes it makes the compromise uh, much easier because we we're both looking for overall the same the same thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. I want to talk a little bit about extended family, about about friends, about children, about brothers, sisters, uh, parents, uh, even. Uh, people that you work with. Has there been any overflow? Has there been any kind of impact at all on this what's called extended family in terms of cross-dressing in the relationship? How has it changed the way you interact with those people in your lives? And, and Carol's <laughs> snicker, maybe go away. Here, here the one well, we have friends and then we have friends. And it's difficult because we do have um, a lot of friends that want to know where we found these new friends. And we're going away for a weekend in the Poconos with these new friends. And how come you didn't invite us? So it, that's the only difficult part uh, with the friends. I mean, there's, there's no way to be comfortable in telling the friends. Uh, we found wonderful friends here and throughout where we live uh, that are cross-dressers and I feel a different um, camaraderie with a cross-dressing couple than I do with my regular friends. I say normal friends, but I don't mean it that way because I think this is normal. <laughs> it's, we have friends on both, both sides nice. too and as far as uh, the extended family knowing, none of our extended family knows. And, um, but, and that itself is kind of neat because it's like our secret. Yeah. You know, so, mm -hmm. and it's something that we have together that nobody else really shares with us except for our other right. cross-dressing friends. Which are and a big part of our life now. Our very big part. Friends are yeah, like, very you know, big very part. Very big part. Um, when we go out with our other friends, I know I, we can go out with another couple and I'll sit and look at the guy and see what you can do with his eyes, you know? <laughs> 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 this is like Tommy after we'll go out and say, uh, hey, you imagine doing his eyes? Uh, this is like a business guy, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and, and we had two friends that uh, got divorced that we were, the, were very close with and we were really at a loss for close friends at the time. And when we came to the Poconos, we met Babs and Carol, and uh, they have become a, a significant part of our lives. But what we have done is to make it real for our kids is that we have, the families have met as, as, a, as a group. Um, anywhere from going to uh, New York and seeing a couple of Yankee games to uh, them coming up to our house uh, on a visit. So we have become both normal and cross-dressing friends. So there's been a significant impact on yes. your extended family because yes. you have right. a, new, a whole new set of friends. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we've done the same thing yeah, too. We've, had we've met done a couple. Done dressing and stuff and, right. and they've they, been up and met the kids and all right. that stuff. My, my yeah, children so. know at least um, eight of the couples that we know as well yeah, as dressers. It's like great, isn't it? As yeah. regular people. Right. Yeah. right. And it's all yeah. in the straight community. In the straight, yeah. yeah. And it's, as, as Carol said, you know, it's, that issue has to do, there is an issue and that has to do with these newfound friends all of a sudden <laughs> and where they've come from. <laughs> That's and, the problem. and also, you know, receiving phone calls from people that, you know, they had never talked to before 
and names that they now have to learn. And you know how difficult it is sometimes to remember names and link who's who and, and where they're from and so on. So that, there's an issue involved with that, but we, we sort of, we handle that. Yeah. We, we handle it and mm -hmm. we, by keeping them literally in the dark about it, um, uh, w by having them meet our new friends, uh, they realize that, well, these are nice people and these are people that, uh, you know, they'd like their mom and dad to become associated with and, and do things with. And then, of course, afterward, when you do things again, it's much easier because now they've had a chance to meet them. Just and this, them. Right. it has softened everything so much for them that it's, now it's natural. It's fine. Okay, let's stay on the subject of, of children. Um, a lot of times, and I've heard this happen to people who end up getting divorced, um, the argument is used that because the father is a cross-dresser, he can't be a good parent and the mother doesn't want them to see the kids. How do you feel about being a cross-dresser? Uh, how do you feel about your partner being a cross-dresser in terms of also being a parent? It, can a cross-dresser be a good parent? Is that possible? Let's start with Sandy and Nancy. Mm -hmm. I think definitely they can probably be the, the a better parent because they can see things from both sides and they have a feeling for the sensitive and um, and the, the strictness that has to be there with raising a child. But I think, um, I, I, well, I guess I just think they can be a better parent. How do you feel? I have uh, felt um, more comfortable in my parental role since I told my wife about my cross-dressing, not just because she knows, but because we know together and in dealing with our children, um, we, uh, I feel that I, I don't judge them as much as I might if I was a total male in the male role as to what they should be like and how they should feel about people of different uh, races, creeds, uh, sexual preferences, etc. And so, um, yeah, it is. It has allowed me to soften my relationship with them. Soften and, tremendously. And I think I think the result of that is that uh, if you have if you have boys, uh, you're not going to raise them necessarily with a strict a, a macho hand like you. They must go out and play football, or they must do things that are necessarily uh, boyish in nature. And uh, and I feel um, I feel more comfortable in the role of a parent now that I know I'm sharing this with somebody else. And and I just. Uh, I think it has changed me dramatically as a result. Okay. Absolutely. Carol? I think it's uh, maybe a little more understanding. <clears throat> uh, there's definitely more sensitivity toward the, the children. Uh, and I'm perhaps a little more broad-minded uh, in that. I don't, I don't think there's any negative effect. I'm probably, I, I think I'm a better parent for that. She really is. She's, she's uh, calmer about a lot of things, since a lot of the stress goes out when she uh, cross-dresses. And she'll come back into the situation less stressed. And um, she's never taken it out on the children if she's had a problem, because she always can revert to wearing the underwear or going to bed in the nighty, and she enjoys that. It's. I think they're definitely better parents. I, there's no question. Mm -hmm. She's so much more sensitive. Mm -hmm. And she can talk to our kids about anything. It makes no difference what they talk about. Um, it it's can be, kids, it's, their friends too come over. Yeah, their friends <laughs> come like, over like to the awesome. house like, and they, they really parent. can't understand how we can be so open and, and that our kids will just come and talk to us. It doesn't matter if it's something about school, something sexual. Mm -hmm whatever you and know it's just, real open. it's just real open and i it's all to do with the cross-dressing i really or not all of it but basically it is just because that we're so, more to open. so much you know, a lot of right. learning how to be open right yeah. came exactly from being able to deal with right the cross -dressing cross -dressing, yeah. mm -hmm. and being less judgmental yeah mm -hmm. yeah that's definitely, that's something. definitely so and teaching mm -hmm. them to be less judgmental in the process. Right. That's the thing that really means a lot to me. Mm -hmm. Do you think you will ever tell your children? Don't everybody answer it once. No, I don't. Um, <laughs> it's very much on a need-to-know basis. Um, if, 
if Nancy were to pass away before me, the clothes would just be um, gotten removed. It would be the extent of it. If I pass away before Nancy, then uh, Nancy would um, call the kids in and have a talk because we wouldn't want them to uh, find out if something happened to Nancy afterwards. If my children would ask, or any one of them would ask, uh, I think we would be able to tell them because they'd be mature enough. My children are old enough to be mature enough. Um, we, on the other hand, did not tell uh, my in-laws when they were older because they're set in their ways and they wouldn't understand. Uh, a five-year-old, I don't think, would understand either. But our children are old enough that they would understand we are not going to run and tell them. But if, if the time comes where we have to, if they ask me, I will be honest with them. That's Sorry. good. Um, we're not going to sit down and say, kids, you know, we have something to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Surprise. <laughs> yeah. You know, but if, if the situation comes up, um, then definitely we would, we would tell them we would be truthful with them. Honestly, we're not going to lie to them. You know, yeah. we have one child that is nosy and she I really think that she has a, a hint you what's know, of what's going on. I'd really but. like them to know. I mean I would just because I'm real close with them every day with everything else and it just would be nice to share with them the same as like I share with you I mean for them to know. Right. Yeah. I don't think they need to know and I don't even know if it would make any difference in, in our relationship but it's it's part of me that I don't get a chance to share with them and, and it would be really nice to share that part with them. Just out of curiosity get age ranges of children? Are there 16 and 17? 12 to 23. 17 and 19. Okay. Interesting. Well, I have one in between, but I didn't mention that. <laughs> <laughs> We're at the end. I want to close this up. For all the couples out there watching this video, for all the women out there watching this video, what is the one key thing, one key message that you want to send to that woman who's sitting there watching this video wondering what the hell's going on with her relationship. The wife Same. has got to know that she is not the only wife out there and she has people that she can share and find out information from and share her feelings and find out what the other wives are feeling. How does she find those other wives? Hopefully through her husband, he will have researched to find um, clubs, um, support groups, uh, even counselors would know places that they can go to talk to um, other wives that uh, are in the same situation. Anybody else want to add to that? I think also another thing that, that each wife needs to know that her husband, even though he dresses in the dress, is still her husband. Right. Mm -hmm. and that they still have the same relationship, he's still the same person in a dress or out of a dress. It's the person you married, the person you fell in love with. In other and, words, it's just clothes. Right. More or less, yeah. she has to, more or less it is. Yeah. She has to uh, learn that, or know that she has to make adjustments, but those ju adjustments will be worth it in the end because when you get a best friend out of a situation where you think, oh my God, you know, look at this person, um, it makes a difference. And it's just a matter of coping and just for the little bit because then it becomes a pleasure. That's mm -hmm. what I think. And then she'll know the total person. Right. If you're lucky enough to have somebody special in your life, then just hold on and go That's and, right. and it'll be yeah. worth it. It's, it's great right. when it right. hits. If you love the if you love the person before you'll love them afterwards. That's right. Mm -hmm. okay. Sandy, Nancy, Carol, Babs, Char, and Jody. I want to thank you very much for giving up your time to do this video, and I'm certain that this is going to be a great help to a lot of people. Thank you for being here. Hey, everybody, free. Thank you. Okay. I'd like to thank our three couples for giving up some of their time here at the Paradise in the Poconos weekend. And I especially want to thank the wives of the crossdressers for being so courageous and honest for the camera. Now, you'll find additional help in my book, Coping with Crossdressing, Tools and Strategies for Couples in a Committed Relationship. It's available direct from CDS or from other vendors like the International Foundation for Gender Education and the American Educational Gender Information Service. If you have questions or suggestions that you'd like to share, please write me at this address.